Hey guys, it's the Black Link here. I'm here to talk to you about a little game that's currently in its public beta called Starhawk for PS3. Now, the beta was actually um, made available, I think, about two months ago, back in January. Uh, but it was originally only for PlayStation Plus members. But now it's available for everyone, and I really think everybody should check this game out, because I haven't seen very much of it, and I haven't seen very many people playing it as of late. And it's a really fun game that's got a really great foundation, and uh, I think it's going to be pretty promising for the future, so... What I'm going to do here is I'm going to play through a match or two, and uh, show you guys exactly what Starhawk is offering. But uh, first we're going to listen to the theme song for it, because it sounds really cool. It's like a western style thing, which is, uh, I, I believe, the theme they're going for for the entire game. Now, from what I've seen, you play as two different factions. Uh, I don't really have much information on them. I just know one faction is like alien, and the other faction is humans. Very creative, I know. Alright then, now that the uh, theme song is finished, let's check out the main menu. Let's see if we got Quick Match, Create Game, Skills. I guess you level these up as you play. That's cool, you wouldn't think this would be available on the beta. Engine mods, fuel efficiency, weapon mods, rift affinity. Oh yeah, that's, that'll be helpful, because the way you work in this game is you gather energy and then you build constructs with it. It's really cool, I'll get to that in a minute. But, uh, yeah, there's plenty of skills to level up, that's always good. News, I guess that shows, yep, the patch dates and crap like that. So you can see it's been patched since January 27th. Yeah, about two months. A leaderboard? Great, I only have one friend who plays this. More people need to get on this game. Uh, game list, I guess it shows you all the games that are currently going on right now. Not bad, not bad at all. An inbox for letters, I guess. Alright. Game invites and clan invites. Oh, forever alone. Clan calendar and nothing else important except maybe settings. Rifters and Outcasts. These are the two factions I was talking about earlier. But since I'm not sure whiff or a which is which, I'm just gonna leave it on Rifter. So let's go ahead and start this. Explore is kind of like a singular mode where you can just go in by yourself and just learn how to play the game, so let's do this. Alright, so the way this starts out is, your team controls an area, that green portion of the map is your area, and you launch in, ODSD style, baby, and right off the bat, the uh, the game feels very similar to the Red Faction series, or even maybe Gears of War. I'm, I'm not really sure who made this, but yeah, it, it, if you've played Red Faction Guerrilla or Red Faction Armageddon, which is the uh, latest Red Faction game, it feels a lot like that. Just with the physics and, you know, even the animations and such. Yeah, very Red Faction-y. Alright, so I guess the best thing to do would be to start showing you guys what exactly you can do with this game. And the way it works is, you see up in the corner, I'm gathering energy. And you do that whenever you're in your base. And with that energy, you can 
build constructs with a bunch of different things. Like right now, I'm going to build a garage, which makes uh, land vehicles. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The Razorback is pretty much a warthog. Yeah, as you can see, it's got a back-mounted turret, which your friends can get on while you're driving. And I believe you can, I think you can switch seats if you're in the driver's seat and just hop to the back turret or hop to the passenger side. I don't know, I'll check that out in a sec. Um, right now I'm doing an exploration of capture the flag mode, so that's the enemy's flag. It's pretty straightforward, yeah. Hop out, head over to the enemy base, steal their shit. And then just hop right back in and head on back. I mean, of course, there's no enemies on this mode, so a private match, but the goal is to survive and get stuff back. But yeah, here we go. You hold X and you can switch the seats that you're, uh, you're sitting in. You can switch to the passenger seat or you can switch to the back mounted turret. Tear crap up. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Of course, this is a very team oriented game, so you know, you're going to want to run out with friends. Not be that lone gun, Call of Duty. Sergeant Ramirez. And boom, flag capture. Oh, that's something I didn't notice before, but when you capture a flag, it actually fills up your uh, your team's energy, which means I can now build more stuff. Let's see. There's auto turrets, watchtowers for snipers, outposts, I don't know what those do, supply bunkers, which you can pick up weapons from, vulture stations, and launch pad. Oh yeah, you have to see this. So you build a launch pad. But a launch pad for what, the Black Link? They all said. How about this? A frigging mech. Hop on in that bad boy. These are the Hawks for which the game is named. And they are pretty sweet. They are metal engines of death. Got a melee attack, a machine gun, secondary weapons like the swarm laser, which you fire from the L1 button. There's other things like mines and uh, flares and stuff, and heat seeking rockets. But the coolest thing about this is, yeah, you turn into a freaking jet. Seriously, why aren't more people playing this game? Once you become a jet, you have, you know, complete control of the battlefield. You can fly about, engage other uh, jet fighters in dogfights, or just generally land in an enemy's base and cause all kinds of havoc. Now, it's not all green. These, uh, these hawks, as they're called, are almost paper thin, so they get taken out pretty quickly by, you know, enemies with rocket launchers and stuff, but still, look at that. I'm a friggin' Decepticon. You may have noticed while I was flying around before, there were like floating icons. Those were the uh, power-ups I was talking about before, where you can unlock extra weapons for your hawk. Like homing missiles, mines, flares, stuff like that. Now you might think it's a little broken to have a hawk, you know, in a capture the flag mode, because it'd be easy to get back to your base, but as you'll see like right now, you actually can't transform into a jet form when you're carrying a flag, so it balances it out because the uh, the hawks, they walk pretty slowly. And overall, it's just better to use the Razorback to, um, to get flags back and forth between bases. The thing you'll notice for uh, pretty much all the vehicles is weapons, your base weapons, they overheat if you use so, uh, ease up on that trigger finger. You might just find yourself in a sticky situation. Alright, so I am very slowly making my way back to base. Uh, I don't know what the score limit is for this mode. Um, matches for me generally tend to last around 15, maybe 20 minutes. So there is a time limit on matches, but I wasn't paying attention to it, so just scroll back earlier in the video and see what it is. Alright, now that we are back to base, let's go ahead and score this flag again, refill our energy, and see what else we can build. Um, shield generators. Oh yeah, these are cool. 
you just place these in the epicenter of your base and it puts up an energy shield that deflects pretty much all enemy uh, enemy projectiles. Nothing they shoot at you will penetrate that shield. What they have to do to take it down, they actually have to, in person, go into the shield and destroy it from the inside. You can see, it blocks pretty much everything. Pretty freaking cool. All right, and on every construct you make, there's a control panel that allows you to do what I just did, reclaim it. And what that does is it breaks the building down and gives you the energy back that you use to make it. So you can make something else. If you don't need a supply depot, you can go ahead and break it down and use that energy to create a launch pad for, uh, for your haunts. Also, some constructs that you can upgrade, like walls. It took me a while to figure this out, but when you put down a wall, if you go to the control panel for it, you can actually upgrade it to a gate so that uh, instead of just being an impenetrable wall, it's not really that impenetrable, but uh, you can upgrade it to a gate so you can go through, you know, your teammates can go through it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is auto turrets. These are really cheap to build and you can just place them up everywhere and they will tag anything and everything that is not on your team that dares to enter your fortress. Guard dogs. Next up is the watchtower, which, like I said earlier, is for snipers. So you build it, it makes a really big tower. And up at the very top is uh, this game's version of a sniper rifle. It's like a railgun. Alright, we're heading on back to our well-stocked base for one final flag delivery. Alright, I was right then. It uh, does only take three points to win a capture the flag mode. Okay, well I think I'll stop the video here. Uh, that was a pretty good showing of uh, Starhawk's capture the flag mode. There's a lot more stuff that you can build, but um, I'm going to have to show that in another video, which you can see if you stay right here on my channel. I'm going to have a bunch of team deathmatch videos and other game mode videos coming up. But really, everybody should check this game out because it is an excellent game. It's really fun. And right now the beta is free, so get out there and download Starhawk. I believe the full game drops later this year, and it's definitely on my must-buy list. Alright, as always, this is The Black Link. Thanks for watching.